The views and opinions expressed by individuals on the following program do not necessarily reflect those of the network, Guys Guy Radio, and its platforms. It's Guys Guy Radio. Here's your host, Robert Manny. Welcome to Guys Guys Radio. This is your host, Robert Manny, welcoming you to the show where men and women can be at their best and everyone wins. Guys Guys Radio. We're here to inform you, inspire you, empower you, and get you to think, feel, and who knows, maybe even act by virtue of the journeys, stories, experiences, and insights of the guests I bring you each and every week to the show. And once again, this week is no exception. I've got a great guest, a return guest, one of my favorite guests. And she's a real guy's guy, if you will, because you don't have to be a guy to be a guy's guy. Silka Schwarzkopf is back with us. She's host of the very popular YouTube channel, Second Act TV. We're going to talk all about finding and igniting new relationships when you're over 50. And it can be a daunting task. And there's so many cool, smart, attractive single men and single women out there who are over 50. And it's not easy, particularly we're coming out of the pandemic. And we've got so many other issues on the table with our culture that finding new love is not a simple task. But we're going to get into it. I've been on Silka's show many times, at least 20 times over the past couple of years. And fortunately, our segments together, we really click. We have good chemistry. And um, as people, not romantically, as people, we both uh, are married and Silka has a great partner and we really connect and we're friends and we like each other. And it's, it's interesting that we just get along so well, and so I'm always thrilled to have her back on the show. And I think you're going to enjoy our conversation, because just like when I'm on Silka's show, we're going to talk about a lot of the challenges that single people have who are over 50, and all the stuff that goes on, all the nonsense that people have to deal with. But, you know, it all comes down to, you know, taking care of yourself first. I remember being single over 50, as, as, as did Silka. And for me... It was challenging because I got blindsided. I got dumped after an eight-year relationship. I probably deserved it, but nevertheless, when it happens, you're never prepared, and it hits you like a club. So you got to lick your wounds a little bit. You got to go inside and ask yourself, why did this happen? What am I doing wrong? At least that's what I did. A lot of people never even ask themselves that, and I think that's how a lot of people get off on the wrong foot in terms of trying to find somebody new in that. They don't take a look at themselves and say, hey, what, what am I doing right? What am I doing not so right? And how can I put myself in a position to attract love into my life? Not chase it, but attract it to me. And it sounds like a little bit corny sometimes where he's like, oh, I'm going to attract the right person to me. You know what? You put out the right energy and, and good things will happen. I know it's happened for me. And uh, it, listen, I put out the right energy and I'm going to tell a story about what happened and how I met my wife. But as soon as I had my head and my heart in the right place, good things happened. I met the right people. And ultimately, uh, my wife winked at me on Match.com and the rest is history. We've been together over a decade and we have a wonderful son and it, it's, it's all good. So I'm one of the lucky ones. But the point is, it can happen. You can find love over 50. The first step, though, is working on yourself. We're going to get We're going to get into that and so much more here on Guys Guys Radio. It's going to be a fun show. You know, it's going to be a conversation instead of an interrogation or an interview. Silk and I, uh, we're good buds, as I mentioned. So we're going to just talk about it. And she talks to so many dating experts on her show. So she'll have some really keen insights about what men and what women need to do to make themselves attract a new partner. And it's work, but it can be fun too, because after all, Dating should be a fun sport. So let's get to it right now. Guys, guys, radio. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. It's Guys Guy Radio. 
Okay, Guys Guys Radio, we're at the very famous interview portion of our show. And uh, it's my favorite part of the show. And we've got a great guest, a return guest, Silka Schwarzkopf. And she is the host of Second Act TV, which is a super popular YouTube channel that helps people over 50 live their best lives. A lot of it is relationships, but there's so much more. Women, men, all kinds of people listen to and watch it. And I've been uh, fortunate to be a, a regular guest on the show, and we have a great time together. And I wanted to invite Silka back to Guys Guys Radio because we really want to help people out over 50 because a- as we have our conversations together, uh, whether it's be- between one of our segments and or before the next one uh, or afterwards, we always find that there's a lot of stress that people are going through over 50 in terms of relationships. You know, with all the other stresses that we have going on in the world, Finding relationships and reigniting relationships seems to be more difficult than ever. So welcome back to Guys Guys Radio, my buddy Silka, and let's get it on. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. That sounds like something out of the 70s right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was my little Marvin Gaye for you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the topic we want to, and we're going to have a conversation to, today, everybody. We really want, We really want to talk about what's going on with... People over 50 um, trying their best to get into a new relationship. And like, Silke, you've interviewed so many relationship experts on your channel. Let's Mm -hmm. start out with, based on what they have told you, what's your take on what's going on out there these days? Well, it it remains the the big uh, mystery, you know, with uh, the communication between men and and, and women (laughs) and uh, understanding each other's needs, uh, you know, different and coming from different perspectives perspective easy for me to say perspectives doing that and uh, you know a lot of that hasn't changed from when we were 20 and 30 depending on uh how how uh, old or young we were the last time we were on the market so to speak the last time we dated and what our mindset was at, at the time so the biggest the, Mindset being a key word here, what mindset are you bringing to the table that are, is either helping you or hurting you in, in your search for love again? Now, what do you find? Um, why do you think women, let's start with women, and we'll get to men. Okay. Why do you think women are having so much trouble over 50 finding new relationships and igniting them? Well, I, I want to go, I, I agree that there's a lot of women out there who are having trouble with that i i don't know that it's necessarily i don't know if if, you know yes there are a lot of women i don't know if it's after 50 or just because of what they're bringing to the table they they probably had the same issues earlier on i mean the the older we get obviously you know the well the dating pool seems to shrink for for women uh there's more women than men uh but you know, it still depends on who you're bringing to the table, you know, who is creating those issues. When you say, you know, there's there's problems out there. Why is it for women? It's really it, we're the ones that bring to the table whatever it is we're experiencing. Does that make sense? It it's, makes perfect sense. And I think and uh, help me with this, that sometimes and we're going to get to men. But I think a lot of times women of a certain age some, sometimes sabotage their efforts because it, as people age, it, it, it's difficult to change. It's difficult to evolve. And I think it's very necessary that we continue to expose ourselves to new experiences, new people, and put ourselves out there. What often happens is people make their decisions as to who they're going to date uh, based on their friends. And, and even if they're over 50, the, the gals get together and talk about it or whatever. But maybe you, know, you worry about, is this guy, my kid's going to like him? You know, what's uh, my friends going to like him? Are they going to make some judgments on him? Do, do you think that's a factor, the, the kind of the friendship aspect of it? Or, or th- is there any type of pressure, peer group pressure in terms of who you date when you're over 50? The same way as it was when you were in your 20s? Absolutely. I, I totally think that. And, and to the, uh, you know, to the extent that you allow it to be again, <laughs> I think that's uh, something that I certainly learned, you know, in my transition. I, I, I got divorced at 50, right? 51, I split up, 52 divorce. I'm 64 now. So I've had I've had some evolution <laughs> here in my, you know, what I believe, what uh, I will and won't, you know, put up with, so to speak. But, uh, well, especially kids, you know, we've, we've done videos on that, dating with adult children and how children can influence a new relationship 
either good or bad. Uh, it, again, how, to what extent do we allow that? And friends, yeah, oh, you know, maybe, oh, what are you, why are you seeing him? You know, we, we can't let friends influence that. I, I take a pretty hard line on that now. I've kind of got tired of that. Uh, we have to make our own decisions. Uh, but to your question, I, I think I've probably worked on that more than maybe a lot of other women uh, have that seek that approval. I don't seek that approval anymore. Uh, and maybe that's the message here. You know, do, do you really need to seek that approval? It's something to ask yourself. Another thing that c- comes up, I think, is that, you know, if you go back to the, the, the crowd that's over 50, there, mm-hmm. obviously there's difference in boomers versus millennials and and Gen Z, the, in terms of the, I'm going to meet a guy and then things are going to change. Mm. That mentality, I think, has to be put aside when you're over 50, because you have to be your own person. And instead of following the whims of your either your friends or what you think might be interesting to a guy, and of course, you want to take care of yourself if it's going to gym and all of that. That's good, because that's mm. also self-worth. But I think women a lot of times don't do enough in terms of pursuing something that they're passionate uh, passionate about. And then if guys come along for the ride, great. So, for instance, maybe a woman likes deep, deep, deep sea fishing. Her <laughs> friends don't. She just she grew up with her dad. She fished with her dad or something. She wants to go fishing. First of all, she'll meet a ton of guys if she goes deep sea fishing yeah. <laughs> because there's a lot of guys doing it. But the point is the beat of your own drummer and exposing yourself to to new things or even old things, but things that you care about instead of trying to meet the expectations of a guy or your friends and, and, and even going and doing things on your own. Um, let's say you have, you want to learn golf or something and your friends don't, well, maybe there's a meetup group and you, you can start there and you'll have to be, you'll have to be exposed to other people. And you'll be exposed to the fact that you can't golf or whatever is the activity. And you'll be forced by doing it on your own to open up and connect with new people just in general. To me, these are all parts of growth. And I think my point is, my long-winded point is, sometimes as we age, we limit ourselves in terms of being exposing ourselves to new experiences. And, and it's so important that we continue to do that because I can tell you as a guy, I go into a room and I see if my mom, if I'm single, if I see a bunch of women across the room, I'm looking for the one with the sparkle in her eye as much mm-hmm. as anything else, because you want some type of passion. And mm-hmm. so many people, men and women, as they age, you can see they get kind of droopy in terms of the vibe they put out there. And to me, it's incredibly important uh, if you want to attract a partner to keep your frequency up, to be interested in new things, to have some passions all about yourself not necessarily about a potential partner, your friends, or whatever. Yeah. Well, you you kind of described my life <laughs> <laughs> since, since, since 50. Uh, I, you know, I, of course, uh, kind of going back to how you started this, that, you know, as we grew up in the 70s, et cetera, uh, I was certainly raised that, you know, uh, of course I was going to get married. Of course I was going to have kids. Uh, didn't have kids. But, uh, yeah, I got married twice. Bad decisions. And, it, you know, it's it's my job to take care of the guy. I, I need to make sure he's happy <laughs> mm-hmm. and that I'm not completely complete without a man. I absolutely grew up like that. And coming out of my marriage, you know, I, I, I was going to find that new relationship. And luckily, I think I learned right up front that that's really not what I needed because I, I, I experienced the, the pitfalls of dating <laughs> the, the, you know, the first two years. And then just said, you know what, I, I, I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to pursue what I want to do. And that's actually how we started this channel. I didn't care what anybody thought anymore. So I could talk about topics that I normally would never talk about if I, if I was, you know, was in a relationship because what would he think? <laughs> so yes, yes, yes. And yes to what you just said. And, and I think what women also have to remember or a lot anyway, is that we tend to, especially our generation, we bring something to the table of what we think a man wants. And then once we catch him, <laughs> and I'm, I'm mm-hmm. throwing that around right. a little loosely, but once we, we have, you know, we're in a relationship, then, you know, I mean, the, your real self is going to come out eventually and show. And that's when think, you know, what happened? I didn't, I, 
this is not the woman I fell in love with. This isn't the man I fell in love with. So absolutely, you know, do go after what you want. And I think what, what women will learn too, and I certainly have, is when you're excited about something, that makes you exciting to the man. Oh, that's, that's and, and that's a big mistake. thing I had to learn. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about um, men a little bit. Uh, this Guys Guys Radio, we're talking about um, how to really ignite a new relationship after 50 and some of the pitfalls and obstacles that get in the way. My special guest, return guest, one of my favorite people, Silka Schwarzkopf of Second Act TV. So let's talk about men a little bit. So you mm-hmm. gave us a very clear uh, picture, and it sounded like what I was describing was fairly accurate in terms of what sometimes women go through in, ter- in terms of uh, – getting to the point where they start to do things on their terms. Guys are in kind of in a different situation. I think what happens with a lot of guys is um, yeah, they're going to look for the woman with the energy uh, for sure. And that's why I think a lot of them, they go young. They, you know, they'll be in a long-term relationship and then they'll be like, I'm going young. Um, I don't know if they do it consciously or subconsciously. I'm not saying it's, it's right. Every situation is different. I think it's sad and it's very tough for the women in, in many cases, but um once uh, when a man though gets blindsided which they often are and gets dumped and they're over 50 i think it's really tough for them because they usually don't have the support group that women have and they're not sure how to get back out there because you know the last time they were single they were probably going down out to the bars on saturday mm-hmm. night and when you're over 50 going you know going out to the bar by yourself on a saturday night it's it's a sad affair i've i've done yeah. it and I, yeah. then then i was like no more whatever and i decided mm-hmm work on myself. And and for me, the key for overcoming any loneliness I had between relationships, and I got blindsided a couple of times in long-term relationships, was that I said, what am I doing wrong? And mm-hmm. I had the epiphany was that you have to make room in your heart for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure that a lot of guys do that, or a lot of women do that, when they're pursuing they want to have a relationship because they're lonely and the moment i realized that everything changed and i i tell the story on different shows but i was at thanksgiving and i told my mother they stopped asking me when are you getting married and i said <laughs> i'm getting married next year and uh she's like that's really who who is it i said i don't know uh, but i'll but i'm going to i'll let you know and i was engaged a year later well, wow. it is it is interesting how we you know can manifest that. We've we've talked a lot about that. It's it's you know whether you believe in that or not. The fact is, if you're open to it, and and all of a sudden you're you're changing again your mindset of what you think the possibilities are, and all of a sudden they they can occur. Gosh, you raised so many points that we could have a, such a long conversation with. You know, one I think age gap dating. You know, uh, there's we, we've done videos on that on Second Act uh, both ways. Yes, if you do it for the right reason, of course you can fall in love with somebody older, younger, whatever. Both, you know, both ways. But have it be because you fell in love and love this person, not because you want to have a trophy on your arm. And right. that's what a lot of men do, and that's what's sad. And it it that's just true. you know, it, it I'm sorry, it, it looks ridiculous. And most men I know that you know think that's ridiculous as well. Uh, but, the, you know, again, that's another topic, it, you know, the loneliness, the uh, blindsided. That was the other word you said. We a lot of guys, say, a lot of guys yeah. get blindsided where they're in a relationship long term and they think it's going OK. And they're not hearing that the w- woman has some issues. And yeah, whether it's and it could be that the woman is not being she thinks she's telling him, but mm-hmm. she's not being clear enough about it. Or she's being clear and he's just not listening. And I think what usually happens, it's a combination of both. And then all of a sudden, the bang, the guy gets it and he's like, what happened? And then they try to fix it and it's too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Good point is is the blind side. And I think just from from what I've personally gone through, what, you know, other experts have said, I just had this conversation this morning with another uh, therapist that I interviewed and that that came up as well. The whole blind side that that men tend not to listen. They don't think it's they don't understand how important it is uh, to actually listen you know, to, to your woman. And what women need to learn is, you know, don't talk so much. 
or, or if what, what you do want communicated, communicate it in a way that the guy could hear. But it is ironic, the blind side that more men feel like, oh, I had no idea this was coming. It's like, how could you not tell? I don't think women feel blindsided as much. I mean, the ones I, no. you know, where, where they left for another a younger woman or something, I think that's so often blindsided. But for the reasons that most women, especially after 50, the whole gray divorce thing that they leave men uh, is, is, is for other things than, um, you know, it, 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 yeah, it's not. It's not a younger man. <laughs> well, let's let's go back to uh, to women for a moment, I, I, because mm-hmm. I just I really want us to help them out, because I think sometimes they get caught in that they don't know how to evolve. And I think it's really important that you said you started to work on yourself and mm-hmm. I started to work on myself I had an epiphany. And I didn't really do that much different. But things started to come my way. And it, and it was great. And they still they come to my because I live that way now. And good things come to me. And yeah. it's just because I expect it and I'm open to to good things. And sometimes bad things come, but I have a, a, a good mirror to push that self back. Mm-hmm. But I think what happens a lot of times with women is that they still have this old expectation of how things work. And they don't take that step to say, what do I want? Mm-hmm. How do I how, do, how am I going to make myself attractive to me? And then I'll be attractive to the opposite sex or whatever sex they're interested in. But you have to really work and satisfy yourself to be attractive to others. Because if you have issues about yourself, the other person's going to pick up that vibe. Thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's funny. We just did a segment uh, with Dr. Gary Salyer on what I know he's been on your show. Yep. Uh, what does it really mean to work on yourself? Because we say this all the time, just like you and I did, got to work on yourself. Well, what does that really mean? And it, it really gets down to identifying how you're wired. I mean, you can, you can put dating strategies, as he said, on there. You can have all kinds of tips, do this, do this, do that. But if you don't know what triggers you, what brings up the stuff that keeps you where you are, then you're probably not going to change. And one of the biggest ones is taking responsibility for what it is that how how you've created yourself, what you've created, you know, taking that internal look. What is it? Why why am I where I am? And and that's what needs to change, as it did for me, that I don't need to take. I mean, I still do. I take care of all. I like that. But not not uh, as an obligatory is the word I'm looking for, an obligatory thing, just because I I like to. (laughs) It's part of the answer. That answers your question. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So let's come up with some solutions then for both men and for women. So let's uh, let's again talk. Start with women in terms of maybe you can help articulate this in a way that women will understand. So it's I'm not mansplaining, but you know, taking those steps to think about what what do I want? Why am I in the situation I'm in? Okay, I'm over fifty. I'm single now. What did I? You have to be circumspect, in my opinion, whether you're a man or a woman and say, what did I do right? What mm-hmm. do I really like about myself? What makes me different? What what can I work on? What maybe was the cause? What had what was my role in the demise of my relationships? Why am I alone? Why am I single if I don't want to be and start from there? And mm-hmm. instead of, you know, it's not self flagation It's really about circumspection. Um, what do you think? No, absolutely. Absolutely. You have to, you absolutely have to see what, what your role in it was. And, you know, while I talk about, you know, yeah, my marriage has gotten out, blah, blah, blah. I totally see my contribution to why it ended the way it did. And because I started the show and because I received lots of this information, you know, sought this out, interviewed people just on this topic, I realized, oh my God, I did this. I did that. I did this. How can I be so stupid? And and then quit doing those things. Like today we talked about that women don't realize how much they criticize sometimes or how controlling they can get, especially as the as the relationship progresses. And that men, they they want to they, they don't mind what to do, like give me a list, but not how to, <laughs> you know, and and again, that, that, that that's a big, big thing that you just figure out what you really, what you really want. And what makes you happy. And what makes, you know, what is it that makes me happy? Why do I want to be in another relationship? And what, what does that look like? The other, or, or, or does that, yeah. What does the relationship look like? And, and think of the person more in terms of qualities than uh, that's a lot of complaints men have too. 
you know, this, this, uh, you know, six foot dark hair must, you know, whatever, uh, this image of a prince that you have, throw that out <laughs> because the, the real princes out there, they're, they're quality men that bring a lot more to the table, you know, than, than that's tall, a, dark and handsome. Oh, well, that's a, that's an int- interesting point because I think, you know, when we have this, uh, the longer the list, it seems like the longer you're single, the longer the list can be, and it work, it can work against you. Now, of course, <laughs> To me, you, you, you need to have a little bit of a list, but it should be value driven, not mm-hmm. about physical attributes. Oh, you might have a type, okay? That's okay, but you need to be open to the fact that how often does the beauty of a person come through in the first meeting or mm-hmm. even second meeting? It usually takes some time where you really get to know somebody, and I have found very rarely, not not always, but very rarely has it turned out that I ended up dating my type. Mm-hmm. And, and and I and I found it to be very refreshing and a, mm-hmm. a, a surprise, but a pleasant surprise. Like, oh wow, because I had this idea in my head, you know, uh, dark hair and this and that, and then I ended up with a tall blonde or something. And it's <laughs> happened, and I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. Not that it worked out, but and yeah. I, now I do have a, a, a brunette, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I never had a, a must have. To me, the must haves should be value driven not physical attributes. It could be like, listen, I want a woman to take, who takes care of herself. Mm-hmm. That's self-esteem sure. issue. That's exactly. about, that's a value. That's not, they have to look exactly like this mm-hmm. because you, you can't, the, people have to look and feel the way that, wh- how you see them and want to see them is not necessarily going to bring out their most beautiful aspects. They have to feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, so, and, right? I'm sorry. I mean, to talk over no, you, I was no, just no. going to say before I forget that we've done several shows, maybe even one with you, where we touched on this, but the importance of chemistry versus connection that especially in the world that that we're in now, I mean, maybe that's a really good piece of advice because it is so visually driven for both sexes because of online dating. And, you know, you get like how many seconds do you get to get somebody's attention that chemistry can really work against you? You know, is is you your the emotions, uh, your hormones. <laughs> you make you make bad decisions when your attraction is solely driven on on chemistry. That's why it's important to maybe you know if somebody else checks all the boxes or you or there's an attraction there. Maybe you're not like blown away and you know the sparks aren't flying. But if this person has a lot of other things that you have, how, you know, how he makes you feel. Did you have fun on the date? Did you laugh? Is he interesting? You know, maybe you don't want to jump and, you know, jump his bones right then and there. But you might in a couple of months or a couple of day, weeks, maybe even a couple of days. I mean, that's for me, attraction and, and, you know, is so much more than what somebody what somebody looks like it really really is now that being said paul is a really really good looking man <laughs> i mean he's you know women are trying he, so they would say oh so good. yeah sure you can say that look at paul i almost didn't go out with paul because he looked like a player <laughs> i judged him the 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 other way and then really learned you know his heart and and uh my well my ex-husband he, yeah, he was okay look you know it, i grew the same here i wasn't attracted to him physically at all at first but then I got to know him and became attracted. Also, maybe for all the wrong reasons in a way, because that's why, you know, maybe it didn't work later on. But again, the 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 don't don't let appearance be so uh, important that you're making all your decisions, you know, on, on, on chemistry or infatuation. Yeah, it changes, too, because there's some, I think you probably experience it. Sometimes I see somebody like a, a beautiful woman, but she's she's on the surface she's beautiful like if you mm-hmm. had to do all the check marks yes. but she doesn't her beauty it, she's not glowing and there's mm-hmm. maybe there's a hardness about she doesn't feel friendly or whatever but whereas somebody may be not quite at that level is much more beautiful because of their vibe mm-hmm. and absolutely so I, and i hear that all the time from both men and women and you know people are resistant to when we say this you know don't like help there has to be chemistry your your relationship isn't going to develop without chemistry but it doesn't have to be overflowing on the the first or even second date for that matter that that's probably the hardest thing to either accept or adapt or implement is is giving somebody uh, based on what i'm hearing a second or even third chance uh, for all the right reasons 
Okay, so we've got let's uh, my special guest Silke Schwarzkopf, host of Second Act TV, Guys Guys Radio. Let's talk about some solutions then. So, the woman over fifty, she's been in her share of relationships. She's out there now. She wants to start to do things a little bit differently. How can she get back out there in a way that's exciting in terms of exposing herself to new things, not being dangerous by doing that, but also putting herself in a position so she can meet new people, new types of men, and doesn't have to rely on her, her friends, you know, approval or her anybody's approval except for herself and, yeah. and, and somebody that fits in with her following her own personal passions. What what should she do? Well, like I said, get out there, F- you know, figure out what, what do you like to do? I was, you know, at, at, uh, when I left my marriage, I was a big runner. I mean, I, that's the only way I could get out of the house, you know, is, is if I was going to go, because my husband, ex-husband was extremely controlling. But when I went out to run, I, I often say I ran to my new life. <laughs> <laughs> so running is, you know, I, I joined running clubs. I joined, uh, you know, every weekend there was something, it, usually running clubs have something once or twice a week yep. in the evening. Evening have evening runs, so that's a great thing. If you don't like like running, there there's so many things now. One of the biggest ones is pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> that is one of the best activities to meet people because it's a, it's 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 active. So you have if that's what you want, you know, if you want active people, that's that's a great option right there. Not only is it active, but it forces you to actually talk, it, and you can. I mean, it's just terrific. So all thumbs up for pickleball there's club if you want to play cards if you want to cook if you want you know there there's all kinds of stuff you can do you just you need to go out and do it mm-hmm. and and then you have to if, if you're not quite as out i mean i'm outgoing let's face it I, I i don't i can go into anywhere and talk to whatever that's not not everybody's like that and that's you know, I, I have plenty of faults, but that's one of my good attributes. But if if you're not, you can practice that. You can get yourself um, even, you know, just if you're at the grocery store, if you're anywhere where you're you know, next to somebody in line or just look, whether it's a man, woman, child, whatever, but get used to interacting, looking like, hey, hi. Oh, you know, wh- wait, where'd you get that? Oh, you like that? Just practice interacting. Because that that's the thing that holds a lot of people back that just don't know how to start that conversation or 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 start the engagement. I hear that a lot. You know, it's amazing, too, because now we're, we're talking about people over 50 and mm-hmm. they need to get out there and start talking to other people. Do you mm-hmm. think that's a result of, uh, you know, we're coming out of the pandemic and all of that? And also that everything is done dating wise is so much of it has moved to online. That it's important that people get out there and get back, back to being more organic in terms of meeting people. Well, I think the pandemic certainly has contributed to that. I think it's more of the personality. What you know? Why are you single? Are you suddenly single? Are you was is a you know divorce? Um, but if you're if you're shy, and there's a lot of people who are shy. I mean, I get this question all the time. Maybe that's why it, 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 I'm focusing on it right now. Is that people are you know hesitant? And then men, on the other hand, because of all the 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 uh, politically correct things now that they have to uh, abide by. Uh, for good reason, most of them, they, they don't know if they should approach a woman or not. So it's important that women are approachable. And one one way is by look, smiling. Smile is so important. Practice smiling. Just stand there with a smile. <laughs> uh, I, I'm being somewhat facetious, but it really makes a difference. And, and where I see that also is like when I edit my interviews and depending on the guest, they're, they can be totally engaged, but if, you know if they're, if they're listening intently. So I, I just I, I've told them I said you know just just <laughs> right. It, it, right did you see the difference? You know I look angry one way and much more appealing another way, and that's all it took. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that sometimes is the because I get approached all the time. I mean, <laughs> I am like I said, I'm approachable. I do look at people, and I, people know that they can ask me questions or they can talk to me, and and that can be developed. You can work on that to where if that's a, a barrier for you, there's way to ways to uh, you know make that happen. How about for 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 guys? That's great advice. Um, but for guys, you mentioned the grocery store. 
I'm mm-hmm. out here in California. I'm married. If I was single, mm-hmm. I go to the, I go to like someplace like Sprouts or Jimbo's or something. The women, like this is ridiculous. This is better than any place. You know, if you go into, if you're in a gym or something, obviously mm-hmm. people look good. They're working out though. You don't want to bother them. But you go to these yeah. grocery stores, it's like, wow. What's what's can men safely approach a woman in a grocery store? Well, it's funny that you say that because <laughs> uh, last at Costco, this happened to me twice now. If I'm getting something out of the bag and this, oh, so you like that? That's that is a good cheese. I said, yeah, yeah. So it's not <laughs> so asking me questions about the cheese, and I'm earnestly, uh, you know, answering about the cheese. And then it hit me to he was he was engaging me. He was trying to hit on me very in a very nice way. But yeah, that that would have had I responded, that would have been. So you know, it could have been a great conversation or let somewhere else. And so, yeah, you know, so we pick something up. Oh, is this, are these the, yeah, there's so, it's so easy, I think, to, to, to engage people in a grocery store. Again, if for no other reason than just to practice, you know, until maybe you do see someone hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, put it to work in earnest. Mm-hmm. How about in the in the gym? The women is that like off limits in terms of don't talk to me. I'm sweaty. I'm working out. Or or is it like the women also go to the gym to meet guys? Because every guy who's in a gym, he's looking around because you can see the goods right there. That's funny that you. Okay, so I'll, I'll answer it this way. Uh, me personally, and and I was a big gym person. I, I don't talk to me at the gym. I'm not here to get hit on. I uh, never did. Even when I was on the market, I didn't, I didn't want that. The, the other day, <laughs> again, I'm do. I'm on the elliptical. I, I love the elliptical now that I can't run anymore. And I, I work out hard on it. Then I got off and then I, then a guy, nice looking guy come, you know, just comes up because you know what you got, you really did well. You did a great workout that, that was good, you know, good for you. And he said it really nicely and then, and then walked, walked off. Uh, and I thought that, you know, that was nice. And had I been interested, I would have said, and I said, thank Oh, thank you. Thank you for you know saying that. I appreciate that. But I could have carried the conversation on. So, you know, definitely don't do it while I'm on the elliptical. Right. <laughs> and then just be, yeah, I, I, I don't know. The gym is, is, is questionable to me Trick, because tricky. If, yeah. if you really do want to, if you're somebody that works out, you go there to work out, not to you know, necessarily hit on someone. Mm-hmm. So what are the best places for, for, for guys to know that women are open to be being approached? And, you know, sometimes we, we talked about the grocery store, but sometimes, you know, I see the hairs up and the, we got the, uh, the yeah. little lemons on and the, you know, the tank top and that's, you know, they're, they look good, but it's maybe not, they're just out there to buy some cider right. or something. So where are the, where are the women want to be approached and sometimes they're not getting approached? Well, <laughs> If you're talking in real life, I there you know a couple of things. I mean, the the first thing that hit me or just came up for me when you asked me that question is online. <laughs> you know, being online is 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 permission to approach me. You're there to meet to meet mm-hmm. someone, or maybe you know dating events, spe- uh, speed dating. I, I don't know. They're they're still doing that. Uh, single mingles you know yeah, stuff like I, that is still I, I i call speed dating speed hating yeah <laughs> that that too it's, it's funny somebody else just wanted me to interview the speed over 50 speed dater thing that's why that came in mind but you know anything that that has to do with being single or or dating obviously is an is an implied uh permission you know to approach after that, I, I think the meetup groups are terrific. If if and you'll know within a few minutes if if this person is there to just play cards or just cook or maybe to meet people, as in uh, you know something wanting something more. One one person that's uh, Stitch dot net Stitch like stitching dot net is a platform for people over fifty just to, just to socialize. It's, it's not it's primarily friends and then romance i've had the the andrew dowling the uh the uh founder has been on several times a great great concept and it takes that horrible pressure of you know uh, being rejected right away uh, you know away but there but there's lots of platforms that do cater to singles meeting each other in you know later in life it, it takes a little research. We we have some on on you know our channel and talk about it, but 
A lot of a lot of women have had are like, I won't do online dating. I did it. It was terrible. Mm-hmm. And people uh, don't tell the truth and this and that. What's what's and you've talked to all the experts. What what do you say to the women? If you had a female friend and she's like, I, I had a bad experience online dating. Would you say you got to get back out there or, mm-hmm. or, or what? Yeah, I think so. I I would because it, it, once you hear, uh, like my my friend Karen is the perfect example. Um, I had already met Paul. Uh, yeah, but I met Paul online eleven years ago, and then when she got divorced and she stayed with me for a few months while she was buying a new place, and you know I, we got her online and had had fun. And she at first she had fun, and oh, this guy is a no, 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 no you know I'm tired of this. I'm not doing this. Was like four or five dates. And she was, you know, I'm done. Online dating doesn't work. I said, you know, Karen, you, you just, you got to give it more of a chance and you have to be a little bit more open-minded. Yeah. Yeah. You're really fit, but you know what? You're older too. Give some, you know, if somebody looks like, you know, they're in their late fifties, it's because they are just like you are. <laughs> Long story short, the, we, she, you know, we, we, I said, come on, let, let's look again. And She's married now because she looked one more time, probably the most perfect guy in her life ever. They're just the cutest couple. They're married now. They've been together, I don't know, seven years or so. Wow. And she's the perfect example of not giving up. Now, you know, it, it's okay to take breaks, obviously, and people do get tired. It, it, it is very frustrating. It can get that way. And it's more frustrating perhaps than it was 10 years ago now with all the apps. But it is really about sifting through people and just learning how, you know how to navigate that yeah you're going to get the the liars you're going to get this if you know what what you're looking for you're not going to get caught up in that and you can get the liars and whatever in real life too i mean i don't think right. that you know that's i don't think online dating uh, you know holds uh, the the what am i trying to say they it's not just there <laughs> that 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 happens uh, great advice so what are the a couple of Little bits, uh, tidbits, advice for men and for women getting back out there. How can they ignite a new relationship after fifty? Final, final thoughts. I, I, ignite? I mean, what, what, like sexually? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like a, a connect, making a real connection. Because uh, go ahead. No, that, that, that's it. Basically, make a real make, connection. Yeah. You get, you know, if you have the 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 willingness, if that's what you want be you know get get back into life and and as you said earlier get out there and do stuff you know find what each other's interests are maybe there's something that you always wanted to do that you have and there were there's a couple of things that Paul and I did <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about here but I would have never done that before and so if it's something that as a couple that you can do that might be really fun really enjoyable you know put get get yeah, get a little adventurous. I don't mean this is, you know, climbing Mount Everest, but get adventurous even with your 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 emotion, with your, with, with your vulnerability. You know, put yourself in a position where you will experience something. Okay, a lot of good advice once again from my buddy Silka Schwarzkopf, Second Act TV. Every week there's a new guest or two on there talking about similar subjects. It's all about helping men and women live their best lives, get together, making that crazy jungle of dating easier to navigate. Silka, thank you so much for being back with us on Guys Guys Radio. Let's do it again. We're here to help people. There's so many really good people out there who are lonely, looking for a partner and anything we can do to help them get together. And the great work you're doing is so welcomed, I think. So thank you so much for being with us again. Oh, well, thank you for having me, Robert. And thank you for all the time you spend on Second Act. Your input is valued uh, just as much. In fact, one of your videos is taken off like a skyrocket today as we sit here. (laughs) I love it. We're just like, I think people just need to hear from regular folks in terms of how to really just take a step back and say, okay, what's going on here? What can I do better? What do I have to offer? What do I want? And not let the craziness get to them. So thanks so much, Silka. Talk soon. Thank you, Robert. Bye. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good.
It's Guys Guy Radio. Okay, another terrific conversation with my buddy Silka Schwarzkopf of Second Act TV. She's host of this wonderful YouTube show. It's a sensation. It's growing so quickly. Uh, it's really growing quantumly. It's new subscribers like every minute. And it's all about living your best life over 50. So she's got a great idea and it's a really good show. And I've been honored to be a featured guest on there on a regular basis. I would consider myself, and I'm sure Silka would agree, that I'm a regular on her show. And we have a lot of fun together, as we did during our conversation today about, you know, finding and igniting new relationships over 50. So what did we learn? I I think the biggest takeaway is the, the starting point when you're over 50 and you want to get back out there. After you've done kind of grieving and licking your wounds, if you've just gotten out of a unsuccessful, if you will, relationship, you've got, to, you've got to have some circumspection. A lot of people, listen, there's a lot of folks, we all know them, they'll never say they're sorry, they'll never admit they're wrong, they'll never question themselves. We don't know what they do in their own private time, in their own heart of hearts, but it's really important that all of us go back and ask ourselves, what happened? What did I contribute to the situation becoming what it became? Could I have done a better job? Was I not, if I'm a guy, was I not listening close enough to my partner? If I'm a woman, was I being clear enough to the guy so he understood my concern about certain areas of the relationship? So many times, as we ta- discussed, guys get blindsided because they don't realize that their partner is unhappy and has some issues with the relationship. Because the way guys roll, and I can say as a guy's guy, we consider if we're not complaining, we're not saying something, then everything's cool. If we've got a problem, the way men usually behave is we'll bring it up. And then we listen to what the response is from our partner. And if it's something that we agree with, great. Hopefully we'll make some progress on that and get back on track. If we disagree, well, we disagree. We have a different perspective. A guy usually won't think that that's necessarily a deal breaker, although it could be depending on the specific issue and the circumstances. But for the most part, you know, guys are, you get what you see. Um, if he has a problem, he's going to bring it up. If he's happy, he's not going to say anything or he'll just be happy. But for women, they're a little more complicated that way than men. And there's a lot of subtleties and guys are not very good at paying attention. And I know for a fact that I never was that good at paying attention until it was pointed out to me by none other by my wife. We were out to dinner one time. And if it was after about three dates, and I had a successful track record on Match.com back in the day, and I was having a time of my life as a single guy in New York City, and uh, but I was having a great time with her. And she was only on Match for a trial, weekend free trial. I was the only person she met. And we got together and we went out once. We had a great time, very casual. The second time we went out, we had a good time. The third time we were out at this little outdoor Mexican place in Greenwich Village. And I said to her, you know what? I'm having such a great time with you. I'm really enjoying it. And I've been in other relationships and they, they haven't worked out. So I'm wondering, what do I need to do to be successful in this hopeful relationship? And she put down her fork and she looked across the table at me and smiled and said, pay attention. And I took a, kind of moved back a little bit. I was taken aback by it, and I said, is that it? Is there anything else? And she said, no. And then she went back to eating, and that was that. (laughs) And I realized, point made, point taken. And from there, we got on the same track, and we've been together ever since. And once in a while, every once in a while, I get reminded that I need to pay better attention. And sometimes I notice it, and sometimes she points it out. But, hey, guys, it's a big deal because I know, guys, we like to pay attention to ourselves and issues that are matter to us. But the little things, and sometimes the things we don't think about or care about or think that are important, turn out to be really important to our partners. So my words of advice for men out there would be pay attention. I learned in a good way. But a lot of times, don't, men don't pay attention until it's too late. Because often when they get blindsided and dumped, they try to repair the relationship, and it's too late. The emotional hurt has uh, set in. When women say, that's it, I'm out of here, usually they're out of there, and uh, they don't get to- you're not going to talk them out of it because their heart is in a different place. Or 
they're interested in somebody else. And that, that can happen very often also. So Guys Guys Radio, we're here every Wednesday evening on KCAA Radio in Southern California, 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. The podcast and YouTube post worldwide every Thursday. KCAA show gets rebroadcasted every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So Wednesday, KCAA, prime time. Thursday, podcast, YouTube, Rumble gets posted worldwide. Sunday, we're back on KCAA for a replay of the broadcast. And all weekend long, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we're on UK Health Radio, which is the world's leading health talk radio station in the world. It's a digital station, so it's on the internet. But you can catch it, and that's great because you can catch it anywhere on your phone or on your laptop. And they've got so many great presenters on there, and I'm proud to be amongst them. And we've got a really unique show because obviously, Guys Guys Radio transcends just the health aspect of things, but part of living your best life and part of men and women being at their best and everybody winning is also taking care of your health, whether it be, whether it be your mental health, your physical health, or your spiritual health. That's what we do. So Guys Guys Radio, you can catch us all over the uh, landscape. And if you enjoy the content and the guests I bring you each and every week to the show, I ask you to do us one favor. Follow us, subscribe, leave a great review, anything to support the show and the work we're doing, because we're there for you. We're bringing you guests that hopefully have some information that's going to help you live your best life. I know I've said this over and over again, but it's so important because... This is not like a conflict show. I don't bring people on to argue with them. You can get all the arguments you want in mainstream media, whether it's about the pandemic or about politics or about so many things going on. There's plenty of that. What we're doing is something different here. We're trying to bring the right information to help people live their best lives. And it sounds a little bit corny, but it's true because we need that. There's just so much, there's so much out there that we're not aware of, and we're so busy dealing with the details and so many different things, whether it's taxes or your insurance or Medicare or whatever it is. There's so many details that get in the way of our living our best lives. And it's nice that we can flip on a podcast or a radio show or watch a YouTube video and get some new information from some thought leaders. We have interviewed over 750 thought leaders from so many different fields on Guys Guys Radio. I have gotten an incredible education as a human being by talking to these people. And a lot of them have been on the show more than once. And I think if you come along with me for this journey, you're going to learn a lot also. And uh, I'm no expert. I'm, I'm learning as you're learning, and I'm your advocate. And what I'm doing is I'm asking the questions that I think you might want to ask if you were sitting in my shoes. So that's what I do here at Guys Guys Radio. So another great show. We've got another great show coming up next week. Until then, have a great week. Like I always like to say, though, remember, Guys Guys. Finish first. <laughs>